guys, Dr. Reeves here. Thanks for joining me again. As you can see, I'm playing guitar. It's something I like to do. I do it almost every day. I'm not as good as I wish I were, but that's a different video. So when I'm playing guitar quite a bit, like say uh, we have a, a performance coming up and I'm going to be practicing a lot, or if I just, just get in the mood to practice a lot, my carpal tunnel will start to act up. I have a little bit of carpal tunnel, and you can imagine why. So, today's video is a little bit about carpal tunnel, some of the symptoms that go with carpal tunnel, but also I want to talk about things that are commonly mistaken for carpal tunnel. And I see that almost as frequently as I see carpal tunnel, I think. So, come along for the ride. So, here's my left hand. There are two nerves that come down the wrist and into the hand that go to muscles. The median nerve, which lives around here, and the ulnar nerve, which comes down here on the inside. When we're talking about carpal tunnel, we're talking about the median nerve. You can think about it like the carpal tunnel nerve. And a lot of people think the carpal tunnel lives somewhere around here, but it actually doesn't. It lives up here in the kind of at the base of the palm. It's actually in the hand, not the wrist where movement occurs. And the nerve and these tendons come down and they go through this little tunnel and it's kind of tight. And if it's being squeezed, then the nerve is unhappy. And it goes to these muscles and it goes to the skin more or less in this area. My pen's not writing very well. So it tends to be felt most significantly in this area, the thumb, the first finger, maybe the second finger. Um, and if you, in some people, if you're really careful and you use a pin and you touch on on say this side of the finger and then you come and touch on this side of the finger with something sharp they can feel a difference. I saw a patient uh, today in fact with that. The ulnar nerve comes to the <clears throat> to the skin that's here and there's a tiny bit of patch of skin back here on the on the top of the hand that the radial nerve comes to but the radial nerve doesn't go to any muscles down in the hand so you won't get weak. <clears throat> But the, the carpal tunnel nerve goes here, the median nerve goes here, and so, so people will tend to have a lot of symptoms here. But many times people, when you ask them, when they have, and they have carpal tunnel, we've done the testing on them, we've done an EMG test, and we've demonstrated that the nerve is not carrying the impulses properly through the tunnel because it's being squished from something. Uh, but many times you ask people, where is it numb? And they'll say, my whole hand. My whole hand falls asleep. And that's just what it feels like. And I've kind of had that feeling myself. Symptoms also can radiate up the arm. Often it's in the forearm, but it can hurt or ache all the way up to the shoulder at times when the carpal tunnel is stirred up. Now, we've kind of talked really briefly about what carpal tunnel is. We haven't talked about why it occurs, and there's a lot of different things that can lead to carpal tunnel occurring, not just overuse of your hands. Uh, one of the main things that's also correlated with carpal tunnel is overuse of the fork. <gasps> and by that I mean the bigger the waistline, the higher the chance of getting carpal tunnel. It's not clear why, but that's the fact. We see it in lots of scientific studies. There's a lot of other conditions that can lead to carpal tunnel, thyroid problems, pregnancy uh, often seems to cause some carpal tunnel symptoms. Uh, arthritis in the wrist, because the carpal tunnel is pretty, pretty narrow and there's bones kind of on three sides of it. And those bones have little joints between them. And if they get arthritis and they're swelling or thickening, then you just run out of space in that carpal tunnel. So there's a lot of different things that can lead to carpal tunnel tunnel syndrome. Now, some things that I see that are thought to be carpal tunnel but aren't. 
probably the most common, is someone who has arthritis here in this joint or in this joint or several joints or even arthritis in the wrist. So they come into the doctor and they say, my hand hurts, I can't grip things, and carpal tunnel is fairly common. And so common things being common, their doctor might think, well, maybe they've got carpal tunnel. And they might, but uh, one easy test for this is not just where does it hurt, but um, how can you make it hurt? In other words, if somebody comes in, they say, well, I've got pain here, my doctor thinks I've got carpal tunnel, and I squeeze on this joint and that causes the pain, then the pain's coming from that joint. Now, if we find carpal tunnel slowing of the median conduction through the carpal tunnel on our electrical testing, well, okay, that's fine, but that actually probably isn't the cause of their main problem. So arthritis in the thumb joints or multiple joints in the hand, it's not that rare. Earlier today, I saw a patient and we did electrical testing on her, a uh, very nice lady, who has some, a little bit of numbness and tingling in her hand on the right, a little aching at times, but that's not really the main problem. Her main concern was that she had pain right here. And she pointed right at the muscle here in the forearm that attaches just above the elbow on the outside. And Sure enough, when I poked on that muscle, she said, wow, that really hurts, and that's where that's the pain I've been having. And guess what? That's the problem. She has inflammation of that muscle where it attaches to the bones up there. She doesn't have carpal tunnel. Well, actually, she did have carpal tunnel on her testing, but it's really quite mild in terms of the findings on the, on the testing. And in reality, for her, I think the symptoms from carpal tunnel were really quite mild. And really was not her main problem. Tendinitis, inflammation of a tendon, is also a common thing that people have that is mistaken for carpal tunnel. Now I've seen it with the tendons here on the back of the thumb. You can just see them. There's a couple of tendons right here that uh, are involved with sticking your thumb out. And some people who do lifting or certain kinds of maneuvers frequently can get inflammation of the tendon or the sheath around the tendon and they get a so-called tendonitis. It, it hurts and then the next thing you know they're in my office being tested for carpal tunnel. But it, as before, when you go squeeze on the tendon, it tends to cause the pain. Or if you hold the thumb down and, they, and, you, and you have the person trying to lift their thumb up and they say, oh, that really hurts up here. Well, that's not where the carpal tunnel lives. So that's something that's sometimes sent to me for carpal tunnel that isn't. We should talk about the neck. There are nerves that come out of the neck, they go through the shoulder, they go down the arm, and some of them go into the hand. And there's a nerve from the C6 vertebrae area that comes down the arm and it tends to actually go into kind of this area of the hand. So you can imagine that you could have a problem in the nerve in C6 in the neck and the symptoms may show up in the hand. Now, it, it is uh, certainly something I have seen that has seemed to kind of fake us out or masquerade as carpal tunnel. It's not extraordinarily common, but it does happen. Usually there's more pain up the arm with a C6 nerve root problem. Um, usually the, they don't complain of a lot of numbness down in the hand, but usually more kind of pain. And sometimes people will even say, uh, gee, my, my, I have pain that comes down my forearm into my hand. And when I hold my neck in just the right position, it gets a lot worse. Well, that's the sign that it's probably actually something coming from the neck. Of course, the, the, a person can have more than one problem, as we've discussed a little bit already. Uh, having carpal tunnel is hardly rare, particularly as we get older. 
we get more arthritis and our waistlines get bigger. And it's not that rare that somebody comes in uh, and we find that they've got some carpal tunnel and uh, that's not really the main problem though and it's something that needs to be uh, evaluated or kept an eye on. Let's talk a little bit about treatment. And when I do testing or I see patients who we decide have carpal tunnel, almost always the next question is, do I need to have surgery? Fortunately, the answer is often no. Now, we can grade how bad the changes are on the, the EMG, the nerve conduction electrical testing of how, how it's conducting. We can, uh, we can kind of come up with a system of saying, you know, is it uh, minimal, mild, moderate, marked, terrible, what have you. And there's a number of system rating systems people have come up with. None of them has been universally accepted because it's, it's really kind of hard to, to uh, get something that covers all the bases and everybody has their own preferences, myself included. But generally speaking, you can think of carpal tunnel, the electrical changes, the damage to the nerve, is coming in this sort of standard three or four or so flavors that a lot of diseases come in. There's minimal, like just a, just a tiny little bit. Oh, it's just barely abnormal. There's mild, there's moderate, there's severe. That kind of covers most things, including carpal tunnel. And I can tell you that many people who have mild carpal tunnel don't need to have surgery. You can argue that if you have really severe, things have gotten severely abnormal, that you've kind of waited a little too long. Because by that time, the muscle here on the thumb has probably somewhat wasted away, and you've gotten weak, and a lot of damage has occurred to the nerve, and recovery may or may not be complete. So, it's a bit like a lot of things with surgery, or at least some things with surgery, it's a timing issue. Uh, you don't want to go operate on every person who has m minimal or mild carpal tunnel. You don't really want to wait till they're severe. Um, and the other thing to remember is when I'm rating carpal tunnel as a neurologist, I'm rating how the numbers look on the electrical testing. I'm not rating how bad the symptoms are. The correlation between how bad the symptoms are and how bad the numbers are on the test is a pretty loose correlation. There, there is some correlation, but it's not very tight. So you really can't just look at, at one side. What do the numbers look like? And then decide to do surgery. What, is, what are the symptoms like? Well, on that alone, you should decide surgery. It's not like that. You need to kind of put the whole thing together.